What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. So today I'm finally addressing a series which I've been wanting to do for a long time and that is kind of like a monthly builds video where I can suggest different parts for you guys to use in your PCs and you can then kind of pick and choose those part lists as well and kind of add or subtract what you feel is necessary for you. Obviously I'm going to go through each part list and suggest my like personal opinions, what I think looks good and what I think will complement the build quite well. But at the end of the day, everything's subjective and you can change whatever you feel the need to change. But I've got three prices set up today. We've got 400, 800 and 1200 pounds. And I'm just going to run through those very, very quickly for you just to give you a quick idea of what we've got. So we've got a 400 pound system based on the Ryzen 5 2400G. We've then also got a 800 pound system based on the Intel 9400F. And then we've got a 1200 pound based on the Ryzen 7 2700. So as you guys can see, we've kind of got some various different processes in there. AMD is going strong. Two out of three of them are AMD. So let's run through the parts we've got to look at and see how I've allocated my kind of spending money for each of these PCs. So starting off first, we'll start with our 400 pounds Ryzen 2400G system. We've got the four core eight thread Ryzen 2400G. This is the model with the integrated graphics. So you don't need a graphics card with this PC and I've not included one for this price point. We've also pairing that with an ASRock B450M Steel Legend motherboard. It's a micro ATX board. So we've got a micro ATX case. We've got some RGB lighting. We've got M.2 slots. We've got four RAM slots as well, or four DIMM slots. Honestly, it's a pretty nice looking board as well. Usually when you're kind of sticking to budget options, motherboards usually look a bit poor. Just, I don't know, they just don't look great. And uh, so it's good that ASRock have kind of got this super budget orientated version with this kind of Steel Legend brand name, and I'm happy to see it. So for RAM, we've got eight gigs of Team Group Vulcan 3000 speeds memory. It is only eight gigs, but it only costs 50 pounds. So if you want to add more to say 16 gigs, it's even cheaper. You can actually get 16 gigs for around, I believe 80 pounds or maybe close to 90 in the UK right now, which is amazing. Obviously I recommended kind of eight gigs for now because it's trying to keep it close to that budget. But if I was being honest, I would say probably try and get 16 gigs now if you want to increase your budget to maybe 450 pounds and that would see you just nicely. For storage, you've gone for an SSD and a hard drive combination. We've got a 240 gig SSD from Kingston for 25 pounds and a two terabyte hard drive from Toshiba for just 50 pounds. Pairing them together is a match made in heaven. We get all that two terabyte for storing all of our games and big files and folders and music videos and whatever films, whatever you want to store on there. On the SSD, we can have our main kind of system. We can have the OS on there. We can have programs like Chrome on there, or maybe your game launchers, just all on there, it's ready to go. So they load up nice and quickly. And then all your kind of mass storage and mass large files can go on that hard drive for later use down the line. For the case, I've gone with the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. It's a cute little case. You can rearrange the IO to be on the top, the bottom, the side. It's also got these magnetic dust filters on the front, the top and the bottom. It's just a pretty cool looking case if I'm honest. I really do like this case and it's even got a handle. Nice. You don't see many cases with handles nowadays. And for just £45 right now, it's a pretty good looking case. You could potentially look at maybe say a £40 ATX case. It's completely up to you, but we've got that micro ATX board to try and keep the prices down a little bit. So we can kind of pair that cheaper motherboard with a kind of cheaper case. And to be honest, it'll look pretty good for now. Also, this kind of case gives us the option to add a fairly long graphics card in the future. So you could pair this with maybe like an RTX 2060 or a GTX 1660 Ti. And I think that would be a good system overall. Fairly well kind of rounded and kind of good 1080p gaming PC for not much more than say, probably close to 600 pounds. And powering all of this, I chose a Cooler Master MWE 500 watt 80 plus power supply. It's not 80 plus bronze, and you probably can get ones for lower prices even. You can, I think Be Quiet have got one for about 35 pounds, a 500 watt or even 400 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. But at the end of the day, it's all subjective where you can find a good deal on around four to 500 watts, I'd recommend. 80 plus bronze, I'd also recommend. 
80 plus from maybe a respectable brand like Cooler Master or Corsair or EVGA, maybe you'd be happy with that. But I'd look for the 80 plus bronze for someone kind of starting out and it's usually a solid way to go. You don't really need anything more than that, like 80 plus gold, unless you're gonna be running kind of higher end hardware for a longer period of time. So to summarize, we've got that 400 pound system. So we've got the SSD and the hard drive and we could combine them to maybe just one 500 gig SSD just to kind of reduce costs even more. Or you could go the opposite route and just add more SSD and just be even better off. It's up to you which is you feel is necessary, but I feel like 240 gig SSD, two terabyte hard drive is a great way to go right now. So moving on, we've got the Intel 9400F system. 800 pounds, this is a good PC. This is one I'm quite happy with. So we've got an i5 9400F. This is Intel's latest kind of non-overclockable, non-integrated graphics CPU. It's only 160 pounds, so kind of like the 9600K, which is, I'd say this is a step up, is around 230 pounds. So it's quite a big difference. You could get the i5-9400, which does have integrated graphics for about 180 to 190 pounds, but unless you're gonna be using that integrated GPU for QuickSync in like Adobe Premiere Pro, don't bother, save your money and spend it elsewhere. So with the 9400F and a Cryorig M9i CPU cooler, we should be absolutely just fine. The Cryorig M9i is a fairly budget friendly cooler, it's 19 pounds, but it, it looks clean, it looks cool. We get that nice kind of black plastic on the top of it to kind of cover up the metal effect. So it doesn't look as kind of obvious as say the older Hyper 212. And uh, yeah, I think the stuff Cryorig are producing is always pretty good quality and it's usually pretty good looking as well. So for the motherboard of NSI Z390A Pro, and I, be honest, Z390 is probably the way to go because you get all the features that you should get. You're not missing out on anything by going with like a H370 or a B360 motherboard. You get the Z390 now, then you don't regret it later on. And to be honest, it's about 10 pounds difference between kind of a lower end Z390 board and one of the more sought after maybe ROG Strix B360 boards. So to be honest, I'd say go with the Z390 for now, you won't regret it. And it also gives you that option to say upgrade to that 9600K in the future, or even 9700K, even 9900K. You see, options, it's all about options. You don't wanna kind of limit yourself, which is something Intel is really good at doing, limiting their buyers to kind of spending less money to begin with, and then having to spend a lot more money later on. So as I mentioned earlier, 16 gigs of RAM is available for around 75 to 80 or 90 pounds. And that is exactly what we've got here. It is slower speeds, 2400 megahertz speeds, but Intel CPUs don't really leverage it as much and don't really need it as much as the AMD counterparts. So Kingston, HyperX Fury, DDR4, solid RAM, reliable, and it would get the job done just fine. 16 gigs of RAM is what I always recommend going for at the moment. Tasks and programs are just used a lot more of it, especially Chrome. So yeah, get it while you can, while it's cheap. It might get cheaper, I don't know, but it's good. It's a good price right now. I'm happy with it as it is. For storage, I've gone for the Crucial P1. This is technically an NVMe drive and it is a 500 gig NVMe SSD. I've got one of these in my PC at the moment. The one I'm using kind of to record all of this, I've got the one terabyte version and 63 pounds for a NVMe SSD M.2 one as well. You can't go wrong. It's like, it's, it, I think they're on par with like regular SATA drives for pricing now. So the benefit of an M.2 one is less cables and I don't know, less effort to install. It's smaller, it does, you don't need a dedicated space for it like you do with an SSD. You need to either put it somewhere, screw it somewhere, stick it somewhere. They just go straight into the board. They're a lot more easy to work with. For graphics, we've got the 1660 Ti. I'm, I like this graphics card. It's a good price point. If you buy the cheaper ones like this MSI Ventus, the kind of basically RRP ones, which are 250 to 260, 
that's where your kind of value is in the 1660 Ti. You start looking at the Strix models and the kind of gaming ultra mega ultimate edition models, you're wasting your money. You don't need a quieter 1660 Ti or a cooler 1660 Ti. You're not really gonna gain much by doing that. And to be honest, that MSI card can probably overclock quite well with that dual fan design that they've got going on it anyway. So I'd always recommend kind of with more budget option cards, just get the ones closest to the RRP. You won't really lose a much, maybe two or three FPS, but you can gain that by overclocking it manually yourself anyway. For the case, this is a steal right now. The Fantex P300, great build quality, great looks, just pure stealthy design. It's got tempered glass, it's got a PSU shroud, it ticks all the boxes and it's literally 50 pounds. Like cases like this, weren't this cheap a few couple years ago and it's because there's so much competition now these prices are just getting cheaper and cheaper and saying like an older model say the p300 has been replaced by the p350x the p300 now still looks basically the same maybe a little less rgb but it's still just as good in my opinion and for 50 pounds i think 50 pounds about two years ago, you were looking at some really ugly looking cases. So really happy with that. Definitely recommend that to anybody. That's even, that'd be good for a high-end system, let alone kind of a, a kind of more kind of mid-range system like this one. For the power supply, be quiet, pure power 11, 500 watts, 80 plus gold, semi-modular, all these words just coming at you. This is, this is great. This is a good power supply. You get the, you get the, I think it's a Silent Wings 2 fan or a Silent Wings 3 fan in there. So nice and quiet running. It's got modular systems so you can just take those cables out that you don't need. The only ones that come attached is the, the only cable that comes attached is the 24 pin. So you can just plug that straight into the motherboard. You're obviously gonna need the eight pin or the four pin uh, CPU cable as well, the eight pin EPS. And then if you don't need any SATA cables, you don't plug them in. No clutter down the bottom. All you would need to plug in with this system would be the CPU and the graphics card cable. And then the rest can just stay in the box for later when you decide to upgrade or add more down the line. So to sum up, well, our 800 pound PC rocking that i5 9400F will outperform in games the Ryzen 5 2600. End of. You overclock that Ryzen 5 2600 and you can get closer to it, but it just isn't. The Intel CPU outperforms in games. It boosts up to 4.1 gigahertz out of the box with its kind of Intel Turbo Boost technology. So it does a really good job. If you're a pure gaming PC, this would be awesome for the price. And then moving on to the final PC, we've got a 1200 pounds eight core monster. The Ryzen 7 2700, eight cores, 16 threads, Ryzen 2, ready to go, 207 pounds. The 2700X model is about nearly 80 pounds more than that. And it doesn't really offer anything more other than a better RGB cooler and a bit more, bit more boost clock in the box. But if you overclock it anyway, you don't really lose anything, but you know. People just want to get the best sometimes, and that's why the 2700X is there. I did it because I'm an idiot, but still. So calling this, we've got the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L RGB <sighs> Liquid Cooler. Like, what is that name? It is a pretty nice looking cooler, to be honest, though. We've got RGB on the pump and the fans. We can pretty much rotate this. We can install it any way you want. It's got RGB control well, what more do you need and for 60 pounds that is pretty good for a 240 mil all-in-one cool it will keep that eight core processor nice and cool and to be honest the Ryzen 7 2700 they don't usually get that hot anyway they're quite good AMD CPUs they just don't get as hot as their Intel one Intel counterparts but the master liquid cooler will do an awesome job with that for a motherboard I've gone for the x470 Gaming Aorus Ultra, I believe, Aorus Ultra Gaming. Gaming motherboard, this one. If you're playing games, you need a gaming motherboard. 
I'm joking, you don't really. We've got plenty of USB ports, we've got HDMI on there if you wanted to use, say, like a Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G on there as well. As with a lot of X470 boards, you also get four DIMM slots, you get the RGB, I believe. It might not even be RGB, I think it's just orange. I'm sorry if it's not good enough for you. Spend another £30 if you want RGB, you don't need it. Says the guy surrounded by RGB lights. But this is a really good board. You get two reinforced PCIe slots, so we, we, we have SLI as an option in the future if you want to go down that route. But with our graphics card I've chosen, SLI isn't a thing, so more on that a bit later on. We've got 16 gigs of Nighthawk RGB memory. We're getting the RGB in there, don't worry. We've got the cooler and the RAM. This, these Team Force RGB sticks come in either black or white. I like the white, I think the white looks cool, but it depends on your preference. Black is just the same. And for storage, Intel 660p 1TB NVMe SSD. £108. £108. They're cheaper. 1TB 660p's are cheaper than 1TB 2.5 inch SSD's. Just let that sink in for a minute. Those things have been around for years now, and that's pretty much about, what, one year? I don't think it's a year old, the 660p, and it is cheaper. So, well done, Intel. For graphics, we've got the GeForce RTX 2070 8 gig card. It is basically the exact same design as the one I looked at earlier. It is the lower end card. If you want to spend a bit more on kind of a triple fan design for maybe like Gigabyte or Asus or EVGA, that's totally up to you, but this card will perform just fine. You don't need to spend a hundred pounds on another aftermarket cooler. It's just, it'll work just fine as it is. It doesn't need the extra money spent on it. For the case, I've gone for the NZXT H500. People love this case. I've got the S340 Elite, which is kind of like the predecessor to this thing. And I like it still. It, it's looking, it's, it's timeless. It's a timeless design, which I like. It's very boxy. It's very flat, it's very angular, but there's plenty of kind of mesh cutouts here and there. There's decent airflow, surprisingly, when you look at the front of it, you don't expect it to be, but it usually performs quite well. The tempered glass panel is easy to remove. You've got plenty of cable management, and NZXT know how to nail a solid case for the price. So £70, pretty good price if I'm honest. And then for a power supply, I've gone for the RM650X from Corsair. We get tons of cables with it. We get the fully modular design. It's a nice and quiet power supply. It's just a good unit all around. Like I said earlier, we can, you could honestly look for that Be Quiet one I used earlier and the 800 pound build if you wanted to save a bit of money. That 500 watt power supply would be fine for these same components. But I'd rather get the 650 watt power supply for now and then kind of give yourself that kind of future proofing in the future, future, again, I'm gonna say future. So we can future proof ourselves, maybe if we wanna add a 2080 Ti, which draws a bit more power, maybe down the line. And we won't feel like we're kind of missing out. We won't have to spend another 80 pounds upgrading our power supply as well. But overall, I'd say that's a fairly decent build. We've got 1200 pounds, 800 pounds, and 400 pound builds. And I'll be honest, I feel like they all kind of have their purpose the 400 pound one is for somebody who's just getting into pc gaming not sure what to do not sure where to spend their money and it's a good kind of starting point that you can add to later especially with that amd am4 platform you get that kind of kind of safety net which a lot of people like about a pc you can kind of be safe with something and know that you can maybe upgrade that in the future you're not stuck with that kind of hardware like dated hardware not a, no upgradability and that's a good option with that Ryzen 5 2400G system. Moving on to that 800 pound system, we get the Intel kind of 9400F, you get the reliability of an Intel system, you get the compatibility that you get with Intel system with regards to memory and storage, and just, I'll be honest, you just generally have less issues with an Intel system than you would an AMD system because of their kind of, they're just more mature as a platform Intel, they're just, They've been doing it right for so long that they know what to expect. AMD are fairly new kids on the block. They've been around for 50 years, but as far as good CPUs, they're only really getting back into their stride 
where they've kind of been dormant for maybe 10 years or so before they launch those Ryzen CPUs. So the Intel system for £800 with that 1660 Ti, can't complain really, you'd get awesome frame rates. You'd probably be looking at 144Hz 1080p monitor as well to pair with that. I think you'd have a fucking good time. Uh, £1,200 is a bit of a high price point. With the Ryzen 7 2700, it's more of a, I don't know, I'd describe it as more of a workhorse CPU as opposed to a gaming CPU. They could probably could go for an Intel system and look at maybe like the 9600K for kind of better gaming performance and maybe pair that with that Z390 motherboard I mentioned in the other, vid, in the other build, the 800 pound build, and you could probably get a kind of better gaming experience. But this Ryzen system, the Ryzen 7 for me is more about people that want to do kind of video editing, they want to do a bit of streaming and gaming, and if they're looking to play it maybe higher than 1080p, really? You're not going to gain anything by having either a 2700 or a 9600K you're going to get fairly comparable FPS between like one and two FPS difference. So without RTX 2070, you're going to be looking at maybe higher than 1080p, I'd imagine. So yeah, I'll, I'll be pushing you towards a 1440p monitor. But anyway, guys, that is kind of the first time I've done this. It is kind of my first attempt at this. And I'll be honest, I want you guys to leave your feedback down below what you think of this kind of whole setup, how it's flowed, has it worked well? And leave your comments down below of kind of what price point you'd like me to hit next month. Maybe look at maybe, I don't know, a £500 PC or a £5,000 PC, what I would recommend. And all those kind of different price points in between. This is all kind of based on new parts. I do like to use uh, used parts myself. My PC that this is powering this whole system is currently using a used graphics card, a used hard drive, used memory. And... Uh, <laughs> it works just fine but some people like the security of new parts so if you've got any suggestions leave your comments down below about what kind of new systems you'd like me to build for you guys and part out what i'd recommend at that price point and also if you've got any kind of themes that you'd like me to kind of hit like, know, like an all white build or a black and yellow build for that time you're listening to Wiz Khalifa or something like that i don't know leave your comments down below guys. If you like this kind of video, feel free to click that like button. If you didn't, click that dislike button. I won't take any offense. And if my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below so we can see each other again soon. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.